Hi, everyone. This is Margie Meacham back again for another issue of the Brain Matters podcast. Today, my guest comes to us all the way from Durban, South Africa, Neelish Harbijan. He's the founder of Magical Mind University, and he teaches people about their inner world, which includes, of course, the power of their wonderful mind and how those principles uh, translate into outer world success. He's an international speaker and trainer, and he's been hailed by thousands as inspirational, motivational, and truly life-changing. His students refer to him as Mr. Dynamite due to his high energy and enthusiasm on stage. And he has a really unique quality about helping people find their breakthrough moment by understanding the applications of high performance psychology, along with the magic law of attraction as he interprets it in his practice. So I want to welcome Neelish right now and let's get right into it. What does it mean when you say that you can help people have a magical mind? Well, hi, Margie. Firstly, thank you for having me on and um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, Great question. What does it mean to have a magical mind? Well, Mike Dillon, has a great quote where he says, the greatest achievement in life is to have the ability to create the world around you so that it matches the dreams in your head. And what having a magical mind is about is having a mind that is supportive to your success. You see, we live in a world right now where most people are stressed out, they're anxious, they're plagued by fear, doubt, worry, and most people are going about their days unhappy and in a depressed state. So that is not supportive to success and to having a happy, fulfilling life. Now, when we speak about having a magical mind, And again, it's having a mind that's supportive to success, having a mind that matches the dreams in our head, having a mind that is tuned to the powers of our natural intuition, our inner guidance, and a mind that's connected to our hearts and what we want. And, you know, the sad thing is that most people have these dreams of you know, having a better job or being in a better relationship or starting your own business and being more successful. And yet their minds take them out. Okay. So let's, let's pursue that a little bit more. Um, Why, why is it so important to get the mind engaged. I mean, we've all been taught to work hard and to do your homework and that'll get you where you're at. So why do we also have to follow these principles inside the mind? Well, let's put it this way. I want you to picture a piece of land, Margie, with fertile soil. And whatever you put into the soil will yield the results that you're looking for. Now, let's look at, I want you to picture in your mind a fertile piece of land with beautiful soil. And whatever you put into the soil is going to come out and manifest on the outside. Now, if we put in beautiful, good seeds of flowers, which will yield good crop for us, then that's what we're going to get. However, if we don't take care of the soil and we just let any weeds get into there and grow from there, then we're not going to get the results that we're looking for. And our minds are exactly like that. Whatever we put into our minds is either going to yield beautiful flowers as a result, or we're going to come up with weeds in our garden and be unhappy and depressed and stressed out and anxious. So it's very important that we put in the right nutrition into the soil. Just as we have, we, we want to have good diets. We put good food into our bodies, but what about the food that's going into our mind and how much time do we actually take to do that? 
Okay, great. Yeah, and um, you're speaking uh, pretty much from the psychology side of things, cognitive psychology and in metaphors. But I can tell you, because you know my practice is very focused on neuroscience, that mm -hmm. we can talk about it in terms of the what's going going on at the biological level with blood yeah. flow and where different parts of the brain are activated. We could talk about it at an even finer level um, where uh, individual molecules are generating the, um, the energy that goes from neuron to neuron. So um, no matter which science you look at, it seems that you need to um, use it to understand what happens in our amazing brains. So we're in a, a wonderful time where science is really starting to help us illuminate how our minds work and what tremendous tools they really are. So going with that, and I hope I'm not putting you too much on this spot, but I would love it if you could do some kind of a small demonstration for us of um, how we can uh, use the power of our minds. Brilliant. So if we could just do something over this call, um, here's what I'd like you to do, Margie. So if we could if you could just play along as well as you okay. always, if you could just play along. And, All right, hopefully um, everyone yeah. listening is playing along as well. <laughs> so what I'd like you to do right now is give yourself some space um, in front of your computer or wherever it is that you're standing or sitting. Okay. <laughs> sitting, sorry. And what I'd like to do is stretch out both your arms in front of you as if you were holding the handles of a bicycle. Okay. Okay. And I want you to close your eyes. Yeah, they're and closed. Here's what I want you to do now. I want you to picture that in your left hand, you are holding a bucket of sand. And okay. as you're holding that bucket of sand, it's getting heavier. And as you're holding it, it's getting heavier and you're really starting to feel the strain on your hand right now. And you're feeling your hand going down as it gets heavier. And as more time goes along, it gets heavier and you're feeling your hand, your left hand go more and more down. And you're just feeling the bucket getting a lot, lot heavier in your hand. And now I want you to, to picture in your right hand that you're holding a red balloon filled with helium. And this balloon wants to go skyward. So it's going up and it's going up. And as it goes up, it naturally takes your right hand higher. And as it goes higher, your hand is moving higher as well. And the, as the balloon wants to go higher, your right hand is moving higher as well. So I want you to picture your right hand moving up higher. Okay. Was that okay? Did you manage to yep. do that? Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. I would, I'd like you to open up your eyes. And do you notice your left hand down and your right hand? Oh, higher? yes. Yeah, I could feel that happening even with my eyes closed. It's actually a great stretch. You know, I'm yeah, going to remember and, that for uh, and, and stretching. And how, how, how did that happen? I mean, we, you weren't actually physically holding a bucket of sand. Neither, neither were you physically holding a, a balloon filled with helium. So how is it that your left hand moved down while your right hand moved higher with your eyes closed? Yeah, well, we all know that the, um, the brain imagines movement and creates Correct. what they call a map of our movements. And that actually sports, uh, a lot of um, sports professionals are using this imagery when they can't go out and practice, say they're injured or they're on an airplane. Golfers, for example, will picture uh, the perfect putt or picture the perfect drive. And that as they're doing that, their muscles are actually responding and firing. And so they are getting true practice, physical practice by practicing with their brains. Correct. That's that's called imagery therapy. And um, ex ex as they picture in their mind, the neurons are firing off exactly as if they were physically performing um, the physical exercise. And it was a um, 
a study performed, I'm trying to remember the exact date um, or some time back, but it was a study performed in, in California where they took four, group of, four groups of basketball players and they instructed the first group to only practice shooting hoops um, in the gym. So the first group was instructed just to shoot hoops in the gym. And the second group was instructed to do 75% of their training in the gym, shooting hoops, and 25% of their time would be spent visualizing doing it. The third group would do 50% of their time shooting hoops, while 50% of their time was spent visualizing or imagery therapy. And the fourth group was instructed to spend 25% of their time in the gym physically shooting hoops and 75% of their time um, visualizing the outcome. And what the researchers found was that group four, which was the group with the most, the most amount of mental training had shown significantly greater improvement than group three, which was 50% of physical and 50% of mental. And similarly, group three, which was 75% sorry, group three, which was 50% physical and 50% mental, showed more improvement than group two, which was 75% physical and 25% mental. And group two showed more improvement than group one. So imagery therapy definitely, definitely works, or in common day terms, visualization. Yeah, you know, and I often quote that same study. So I know exactly uh, what you're talking about. And it's a very powerful study and it was done long before we could scan a brain and see what was going on inside. But the behavior of the individuals demonstrated what was going on in the brains. So a, a fascinating um, study and we're just beginning to understand why that works the way it right. does. So how about um, a couple of tips that people could use uh, now in their daily lives if they want to start tapping into the magical side of their brain? Well, Margie, I think the first tip that I would give to anyone is the three words, which is the slogan of Magical Mind University, which is feel good now. And feel good now basically means being happy in the present, being happy in the moment, being conscious in the moment that you're in. And the reason for this is because, you know, we all tend to put off being happy at a future date. You know, when I achieve this goal or mm -hmm. when I get the house or when I get the car, or when I get the job or when the business is, then I'll, you know, I'll be happy. And the ironic thing is that when you actually feel good now, and Abraham Hicks talks a lot about this in the law of attraction. And, you know, she says that when you feel good in the moment, you are actually attracting that which you want to you, as opposed to when I get that which I want, then, I'll be, then I will be happy. So I think the greatest piece of advice I would say is that feel good now, which will open up your creativity. It will increase the dopamine in your brain, increase your levels of understanding and awareness. You'll have better relationships, better health. You'll get better ideas for your business. And, you know, Albert Einstein said, why do I always get my best ideas in the shower? <laughs> it was because it was because he was relaxed and he was in tune and he was, you know, restful in that point in time. And I know we all know this, but as Margie, you and I know, common sense isn't always common practice. So very true. Yeah, I would say um, first things first, feel good now. And the second thing that I would definitely recommend is, as we just spoke about now, um, imagery therapy or visualization. I think it is totally, totally underrated by most people. And you know, if a person spends just five to ten minutes every day, just five to ten minutes every single day, just visualizing what their perfect life would look like. It is very likely that their brain, well, they, what we know this through neuroscience as well, that they are um, firing off certain parts of their brain, which will then be more active in recognizing those opportunities. So visualization, definitely something that they should be doing as well. Absolutely. So 
um, you are a, you're a speaker, you're a trainer, you're a personal coach. How can someone get in touch with you, Neelish? Okay, so someone can reach out to me um, at, right now um, on the email address, which is Magical Mind Academy. That's Magical Mind, M A G I C A L, Mind, M I N D, Academy, A C A D E M Y. So that's Magical Mind Academy at gmail.com. Okay, great. Um, and what are you working on right now that's really got you excited? Wow, what's really gotten me excited right now is the Magical Mind University course that um, we are hosting here in South Africa in um, November. It's a two-day course uh, that we're running. And just putting everything together for these two days and just bringing in the latest scientific developments, bringing in the latest learnings and packaging it into this course and just seeing what value someone's going to get from these amazing two days is really um, you know, my mind's just firing off with ideas and uh, thinking how people are, can apply this principle, put this into practice. So that that's really gotten me excited um, right now. Great. And, and I, I know what that feels like, that creative process. So I can appreciate what you're going through. And I wish you all the best with that. And Neelish, I'm so glad that we had a chance uh, to talk together. We obviously are interested in many of the same things. And there's something I just want to point out to the people listening, that there are many, many ways to take advantage of what we're discovering about the brain and how it works. The important thing is that you do it, that you get started, that you use an evidence-based approach, make sure that the science is sound, but don't wait for everything to be figured out because we're just at the beginning of a journey with understanding our minds. But what we know today is significant and can really change the way you do things and can change the results that you're getting. So you've been listening to me and Nilish Harbinchen, and he is the founder and president of Magical Mind. Um, you can learn more about him uh, by reaching out to him on his Gmail address, magicalmindacademy at gmail.com. Thank you, and I hope you guys tune in for our next issue of Brain Matters podcast soon. Thank you, Bonnie.